I'm Emily Chang, and this is Bloomberg West on Bloomberg Television and streaming on your phone, your tablet, and Bloomberg.com. Will Leonardo DiCaprio be the next Hollywood star to play Steve Jobs? The Hollywood Reporter says Oscar-winning director Danny Boyle has approached DiCaprio about starring as Jobs. Boyle is said to be in talks with Sony Pictures to direct the movie, which is based on the biography by Walter Isaacson and has a script written by Aaron Sorkin. Now to our special series on how technology is changing the entertainment business, Wiring the World. Since Alan Horn's June 2012 arrival as chairman of Walt Disney Studios, two Disney films have topped $1 billion in worldwide ticket sales, Iron Man 3 and Frozen. Our senior West Coast correspondent John Ehrlichman sat down with Horn at a Bloomberg Business of Entertainment event today in New York to ask about the secrets behind this kind of box office success. John? Well, Emily, Alan Horn has been a very busy guy over the last couple of years since he joined Disney, a former Warner Brothers executive who oversees the Marvel and the Pixar brands. Within a few months of arriving at Disney, they bought Lucasfilm to get their hands on Star Wars. But we started with Frozen because obviously it has uh, breathe some new life into the animation unit at Disney. I asked him about the financial success to the company from Frozen. Well, we're not allowed to say we how much money we've actually made, but I will say that um, not that we don't care, not that we care about money, but it has, uh, it has been really um, a phenomenal success. It's now the highest grossing film in, it's number six of all films in all t of all time. It's the number one animated picture, up to about a billion one thirty worldwide box office. And uh, the biggest before that was our own Toy Story 3 at a billion oh sixty three. So this is a gigantic success and, the, and there's been millions of albums sold. It's number 11th week, number one on the charts. Have you guys seen Frozen, by the way? Can you get that song out of your head? <laughs> Fox, don't bother me anyway. We got you to sing. You've done Yoda before. <laughs> and now we get you to sing. Um, you going to make a sequel? Well, we haven't really talked about a sequel because we've announced that we're making a, um, uh, a, a, a Broadway show in New York. So the next order of priority would be for us to do a, a musical. Here in New York, we have the music. We just need four or five new songs, and Kristen and Bobby Lopez will write those songs. We haven't really talked about a sequel, though I, I do have a, a title for a sequel, which was not embraced by the fellas. Thaw. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm so glad you picked this forum as the place to reveal all the plot specifics of the Star Wars film. I know everybody's <laughs> excited today. The Internet's going to go crazy. Um, the okay, so you just told us you're heading to London. Yes. Um, to you, you know, as a, a Star Wars. Look at yes, yeah, Star Wars, of course. But to look at this, well, production design and the score of the screenplay with the director. I, I've I've learned to have to be very careful about Star Wars. I mean, if I say, for example, that there will not be skateboards in Star Wars, <laughs> then the internet goes, Star Wars sans skateboard says Disney movie chief. And all of a sudden there's like a headline. And I realize that even something that doesn't happen is, is gets new. So I'm being very careful. We really can't talk about it yet, but we will be able to very soon. We have all the confidence in the world in, in JJ, our director, and Kathy Kennedy, who runs Lucas and is also producing the film. So I think we're in very good shape. So just to confirm, there will be no skateboards in Star Wars. <laughs> no skateboards. Uh, well, you have said a couple of things, though, Alan. You did say recently that casting is almost done. So to, to sort of update on that, is casting now complete? It's almost complete. We, we have, we're not prepared to announce it yet, but we will be very shortly announcing what we're, we're doing. Um, and you had said that shooting had started. Does that mean... We did some second unit work in Abu Dhabi and other places because we have, you know, we have all of these locations we have to film and we have to give it that Star Warsy and if I can use it as an adjective, look. So we need to go to different places that give us the right uh, look and feel and we did have second unit work shooting already but we haven't commenced the main part of principal photography yet. So, uh primary location Pinewood in the UK and Abu Dhabi is another location that you guys have been using. Yes. So when you take all of these movies, these big movies, the global yeah. audiences that are available to you today, which is a larger number of people than ever, yeah. should we assume that that strategy helps to offset an industry sore spot like declining DVD revenue? 
It's true that uh, DVD revenues are down 50 to 60 percent in the last five or six years, and that's really painful to us. I used to get, you know, when we greenlight a movie, we get estimates of what it will generate from each of the revenue sources, um, and the DVD uh, component of that revenue stream has uh, been cut in half. Is Alan Horn of Disney, and we know that DVDs have been a tough market for the film studios. In music, we know CD sales have struggled. There is an interesting trend, though, in music, which is that vinyl has been doing quite well. And we went to one of the few remaining vinyl manufacturers in the country to find out why. Here's what we found out. Long before there were digital downloads, this is how you made an album. And at Rainbow Records, the recipe hasn't changed from the baths plating nickel on discs to the vinyl pellets melted down into gooey bubble gum. It's a process of heating up the dye, the hot vinyl, and hydraulic pressure. goes under about 1,800 pounds of pressure to squeeze it out. It's kind of like making waffles. We're inside one of just a dozen facilities in North America still pressing records. Just four years ago, Rainbow Records was down to producing only 5,000 LPs a day. But now... Well, our average day is about 22 to 25,000 records a day. You're producing upwards of 25,000 records here a day? Six days a week. Last year, six million LPs were sold in the U.S. Small versus total album sales, but that's 144% growth in four years. Compare that to 54% growth for digital albums and a 44% drop in CD sales. If you want to know why vinyl's hot, look no further than rap artist Macklemore. 10,000. A year and a half after the release of his hit album, The Heist, Rainbow's busy manufacturing the vinyl version. And there's a digital twist. When you buy the physical today, in certain cases like this one, they'll give you the digital copy as well. Right, right. That's very common. To broaden its reach, Macklemore made the LP available at retailers like Whole Foods and Urban Outfitters, where it quickly sold out. Inspire Entertainment distributes vinyl to retail stores. They're not only selling those units, but they've got a 12-inch by 12-inch picture of themselves in a store that, that speaks to their brand. With music fans feeling nostalgic about album art and packaging, Rainbow's scrambling to meet the new demand for vinyl with old equipment. Its newest record press is 35 years old, and album testing takes place on a vintage turntable. This is actually a CD centering machine that was converted for vinyl. This is a CD machine that was converted, converted for, vinyl. for vinyl. That kind of tells you where we're going. <laughs> John Erlich, and there, our senior West Coast correspondent. Coming up, we will be right back with more of Bloomberg West. Wiring the World is brought to you by Cisco. The Internet of Everything is changing entertainment. Cisco, tomorrow starts here. This is the cat that drank the milk and let in the dog that woke the man who drove to the control room. Driver was not engaged. Find parking space. Parking space found. That secured the data, that directed the turbines, that powered the farm, that made the milk, that went to the store, that reminded the man to buy the milk that was poured by the girl who loved the cat. The Internet of Everything is changing everything. Cisco, tomorrow starts here.